Welcome to another edition of the Official Jets Podcast, powered by Amazon Web Services. On today's episode, you're going to hear from the newest New York Jets. That's cornerback Pierre Desir, offensive lineman Connor McGovern, and wide receiver Brashad Perriman. And EA, let's just kick things off with Pierre Desir coming from the Indianapolis Colts. What do you think he can add to this Jets defense in 2020? Well, number one, Greensy fits a need because the Jets needed help on the outside after releasing a pair of opening day starters from a year ago in Tremaine Johnson and Daryl Roberts. So you knew they were going to address the position. After the Indianapolis Colts signed Phillip Rivers or agreed to terms with Rivers, they released Pierre Desir shortly thereafter. The Jets needed somebody with starting experience who's had success in the National Football League, and Desir fits the bill. The other thing to consider here is the Jets have great knowledge of this guy considering Joe Douglas's top right-hand man is assistant GM Rex Hogan. Well, Rex Hogan was there in Indianapolis when Desir had perhaps his best professional season two years ago. Well, let's get right into it here. Pierre Desir with Olivia Landis. What has the emotions been like with this transformation? And what have you really felt during this time of going to a brand new team? Uh, you know what? Uh, the, the the fans have just reached out to me and uh, it's just uh, so, so much support, um, so much love. And uh, I'm just I'm just excited, you know, for the opportunity to uh, to have a, a fresh start. And I'm very excited to be a part of the Jets. And I just can't wait to begin. Pierre, you've been in the league since 2014. You've been with a couple of different teams. But when you look at the New York Jets and Greg Williams as the defensive coordinator, why do you think this was the best fit? You know, what I why I decided it was the best fit uh, for me, it's uh, number one, I love New York. Um, I've been in New York multiple times, especially for Broadway. Um, I, I was actually able to talk to Coach Williams and uh, just just speaking on his philosophy and uh, how he saw basically as a, a player's team and uh, what he was trying to build with the culture uh, f- definitely fit me. And uh, we had a great conversation. Um, just talked about a lot of stuff, football, life, you know, how he, you know, knows a lot about St. Louis and uh, the Missouri area. So I, I just felt very comfortable with uh, with talking with Coach Williams and I, he made my decision very easy. How important is that from a player's perspective to be on the same page and feel that connection, especially with the defensive coordinator? You know, it's very important, especially uh, when you when the when the coach is able to see a player's view and see how the players see things. It makes it a lot easier um, because now you're not really, you know, they, they know that you're telling the truth and they know that you're honest. And, uh, you know, that that helps a better line of communication, especially when times get hard uh, during the season. And uh, I think that's, you know, definitely very important. And that's um, something that uh, I, I definitely uh, take as a um, priority um, for a, a coach and um, as, as far as the team. When you look at yourself as a player and as a cornerback as a whole, what are you bringing to this team and this secondary? You know, for me, what I'm bringing is, is experience. Um, I've been – with a lot of different schemes, been around a lot of different players, uh, different coaches. So I, um, I learned a lot from a lot of different people. So just bringing that experience and that knowledge. And for me, I, I bring a, a type of, uh, you know, leadership, um, being an older guy, being in the league for s- six years, I've seen a lot. And I think that I'm just going to bring my experiences, bring my, just, just bring my motivation, just bring my worth ethic and, uh, you know, just going to have fun. I do everything I can, put my heart into everything uh, for the team and for the city. Pierre, obviously we are in a very difficult and different time right now around the world, especially in the NFL with the coronavirus pandemic going on. Things had to be done a little bit differently, especially with the signing. But when you think about the time that we're in, You also contributed off the field. Can you talk a little bit about what you did in Indianapolis, contributing some of the meals? Actually, it was in St. Louis. You know, I I saw that there was a need for uh, just the meals, um, just especially with the schools being out. And I've been in those kids situation where Mm -hmm. school is the most important meal. Uh, maybe be the only meal that uh, some of these kids get. And so I talked to my agency just to figure out somewhere I could help. Uh, We partnered with the St. Louis uh, Food Bank. 
and we was able to provide over uh, 20,000 meals uh, to a lot of different families um, that, you know, that are definitely, uh, you know, going to need in this time of need when, um, you know, they're not able to get that food from schools or uh, different organizations. Well, that's tremendous what you are doing and not only off the field, but we're also looking forward to having you on the field. Pierre, thank you so much for joining us today and letting us get to know you a little bit more. We look forward to the time we're all able to be together again, but stay safe, stay with your family and congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you. You too. Stay safe. EA, what really stands out to me about Desir disregarding his play on the field is what he does in the community off the field. And you just going back to what Joe Douglas has consistently said since day one, he's trying to build the best culture in sports. And Pierre Desir definitely fits that bill. Oh, my God. What a fascinating story. He was born poor in Haiti. I believe he lived there until he was four Ultimately, he ended up playing college football at Washburn and Lindenwood, both Division II schools. Greens, there has to be nobody in the history of the NFL who's taken the trek that Dezier has. You talk about culture. He was the Walter Payton Man of the Year for the Colts last year. The scouting report on Dezier is he's a good fit in the locker room. And we could say the same thing about a new Jets interior offense alignment and Connor McGovern. So Connor McGovern definitely fits that bill as well. Now I'm switching back to on the field. Something that I think Joe Douglas really likes about Connor McGovern is the fact that he can play multiple positions up front on the interior. And McGovern comes into the league as a guard. Then he transitions to center, plays two years at center the past two seasons for the Denver Broncos, starts in 31 out of the 32 games, so he's durable. And perhaps what's craziest to me is that this past season he played in every single offensive snap and didn't commit a single penalty. Yeah, how about that? And uh, McGovern's such a fascinating guy, as we're going to hear in a moment when we take a listen to your chat with him. But his family owned a potato farm there in North Dakota. <laughs> I mean, he really learned the value of hard work growing up there in North Dakota. And then, listen, he had trained power lifter. And also, the other thing Jets fans might like here is that. He, in the past, hooked up with Matt McChesney to do some training there in Colorado. McChesney made his NFL debut as a Jets defensive tackle way back in 2005. So this is a fascinating guy. And there's a reason to believe that the Jets are getting a guy on the upswing right now. And without further ado, here he is, New Jets interior offensive lineman, Connor McGovern. Connor You're in Fargo, North Dakota. You're from North Dakota, but you actually have New York, New Jersey roots. So can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, of course. You know, my uh, dad's family is originally from the East Coast uh, family. Um, His mom and dad uh, grew up in uh, Brooklyn. And then, um, you know, he was born in New Jersey, ended up moving around a lot with his dad's job. But um, he still... Um, has a lot of cousins out there. You know, I call them, they're, we're obviously really close. I call them uncles, even though technically they're second cousins. Um, so, you know, I grew up a lot, uh, spent some summers out on the Jersey shore, um, in ocean Grove and, and I spent a lot of time out there. You know, actually, I think my first NFL game was a jets game versus the Ravens. Um, so there's definitely, you know, I'm originally, uh, from North Dakota, but there's definitely some ties uh, to the East coast. You play center, you play guard. You just told the media that you prefer center. I have to ask, have you reached out to Sam Darnold at all? And if you have, was it him that started the communication and just how did the overall communication go? Yeah, you know, we're, um, we have the same agency CAA. So um, it was pretty easy to get his contact info. um, And uh, with all the, stuff going on, you know, he, uh, he, he actually ended up reaching out to me, just said, what's up. And, and, uh, that, you know, getting uh, excited for everything to start. And when everything does start, um, definitely excited to, uh, you know, really grow and build that relationship, you know, with everything going on, it's been, um, and, uh, it's been, you know, a little slow and there hasn't been a huge need to start, uh, that, that relationship. And, but now that I think everyone's starting to officially sign and, you know, the ball's starting to roll a little bit more with, um, you know, act, the team really coming together. I think now is the time that, you know, that communication will really be key and, and, and really start to uh, grow the uh, the camaraderie that's needed to, to win a lot of football games. 
Simply put, what do you add to this New York Jets offensive line? You know, I hope to add a lot of different um, aspects. Um, you know, the way I the way I play and and what's you know gotten me to this point is obviously my work ethic and and uh, the the my ability to you know just play um, to the to the whistle and you know and have a no quit attitude. You know, my um, I always have gone by the belief that uh, you know hustle takes no ability. You know, it doesn't take any God given ability to to work hard and and to uh, to give your best. And that's the kind of the attitude I'm going to try to bring. And, and from what I've noticed, that's the attitude that a lot of the guys in the jets have with, you know, Alex Lewis and all those kind of guys have that, you know, attitude that, uh, you know, there's no quit and, and, uh, takes no <clears throat> ability to, to, to give full effort. And, and then besides that, obviously just, um, the mental side, you know, hoping to, to be able to help, uh, make everyone's jobs easier and, and help with the calls and get everyone on the right page. And, um, if you have a couple of guys that, um, you know, mentally have it, have it really down, it makes everyone else's job a lot easier and everyone can play play fast you know that's the key to winning games is playing fast and you can't play fast if you don't know what you're doing and and i hope to to help everyone get on the right page and, and be able to play fast so free agency takes two to tango here jets clearly interested in you but why were you interested in the jets you know i i think the jets have have a, a real good core they have a good core group of guys that that it takes to win a lot of football games i wanted to add to that core um and and i you know with a with a young a uh, quarterback that has a lot of talent. You have the opportunity to win a lot of football games. You got a great running back. You got all the weapons. Now we have, well, we've built the offense line and, you know, the Jets always have had the defense to win, to win championships. So um, I, you know, I thought it was a team where I could um, be a piece that plugs in and, and to, to really help it reach that next level and win a lot of football games. So obviously a lot of people are going to ask you about Sam Darnold protecting him, what you can do for a young quarterback. So I want to get your opinion on not only that, but what can you do for the guy that you're blocking for in Le'Veon Bell? Because he's clearly one of the premier backs in this league. Blocking for a guy like Le'Veon Bell, uh, Bell is nice. You know, he can he can make your block look really good. And you can also um, make his runs look a little better. Um, so I'm excited to, to block for both of those guys, um, to help both those guys um, on the mental side. Run play doesn't work very well if you're guys if you're not all working to the right guys and on the same page. Um, so I'm excited to be with both of those guys. There's some serious weapons and and you know it gives you a lot of confidence to have them to them back there and it's it's something that makes you really wanna uh, wanna block uh you know give that little extra effort because you know at any moment Le'Veon Bell could to, could bust that you know last arm tackle and and take it to the house and and Sam can you know if you give him that last half a second he can throw a dime and score a touchdown. So um, it's 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 going to be a special year and I'm excited about it. Okay, I just want to end things here on a rather light note. You grew up on a potato farm. What is your favorite form of potato? <laughs> I think it's a very it's a northern northern thing. Or if you've ever been to, I don't know if Cracker Barrel's out on the East Coast, but uh, those cheesy hash browns get me every time. You know, we always had them. My grandma would always make them um, at holidays and stuff. And and cheesy hash brown that's like a hot dish thing, which is a you know. A, almost embarrassing saying hot dish coming from the west but uh it's it's one of my favorite ways to to enjoy a good potato okay well we have good news for you there is cracker barrel here on the east coast <laughs> won't be missing that too much connor thanks a lot <laughs> congratulations on joining the jets awesome thank you very much ea i'm gonna jump right off of what i just asked connor mcgovern at the end of that interview so, like you said, grew up on a potato farm. I asked him his favorite form of potato. Now, actually, quite surprisingly, he said that his favorite form of potato was cheesy hash browns from Cracker Barrel, which, honestly, I thought he would have something totally different to say. But I didn't know favorite? they had cr- – hold on, hold on. I did not know they had Cracker Barrel out west. I mean, well, they he got- didn't know that they had Cracker Barrel out east. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess Cracker Barrel really extends – nationwide or North Dakota, at least. Listen, I'm Irish. I love all potatoes. Uh, I especially like twice baked potatoes, but I'm a big French fry guy. I'm not a fryer per se, but I get the frozen ones and I I bake them. But uh, I love just regular baked potatoes, loaded baked potatoes without sour cream. Oh, I love potatoes. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like there's not really a bad form of potato. People can't have their favorite form, but... I agree with you. I feel like all forms of potatoes are acceptable. What's your thought on sweet potatoes, though? Uh, Big fan. 
Okay. A, a big fan as well, and they're probably healthier for you. The, that's what I've heard anyway. And uh, I do like sweet potatoes. And, oh, by the way, something that I didn't really try until I was a, an adult, sweet potato pie. Oh, that's money. Uh, I don't think I've had sweet potato pie. I think it kind of freaks me out. You're but, missing out. Okay, yeah, I might have to add that next Thanksgiving. And you caught up with Prashad Perriman, the new Jets wide receiver. So before we hear from him, what did you think about talking to Perriman? Like what 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 was your takeaway from your interview? I think here is a guy that is confident, but he's also humble. And I think that he learned a lot in Tampa um, playing on a loaded wide receiver unit. Uh, he really flourished down the stretch. And my sense, Greens, and I asked him straight up about this, is that he thinks the best is in front of him. If you're a Jets fan, you're definitely hoping that Prashad Perriman has his best football ahead of him and has taken what he what he's done in the last five games of the 2019 season and made that more consistent and made that a habit entering 2020. And here he is, the newest Jets receiver, Prashad Perriman. Rashad, how unique was this free agency process for you? Uh, it, it was very unique. You know, it was waiting a, a lot of waiting around, you know, just being patient, uh, waiting on the right team to call, the right offer that would give me the right opportunity, you know, to maximize my my ability and bring home a, a Super Bowl trophy. Why were the Jets the right opportunity for you? You really just sit back and you know, you know, Adam Gates, you know, the, the offensive-minded coach that he is and, um, all of the receivers, you know, that's been in his system and, you know, Robbie, Jameson, everybody, all of the guys that has those those great years and those great numbers. And you, and you just look around at the guys that's on the team and how they're stacked and you just see a huge opportunity and not only individually, but as a team, you know, trying to go get a, a Super Bowl ring. What clicked for you down the stretch last year? You were one of the most productive receivers in the National Football League. Last five games, 25 catches, 506 yards receiving, and five touchdowns. Really just it was it was really all just opportunity, I feel like, you know. Um, you know, with with those guys, they pretty they were pretty stacked at receiver, you know, in Tampa. You know, you got Mike. You have Chris Godwin, you have me, um, you know, Mike and Chris are one of the one of the, you know, top receivers in this league. And um, you know, once they once they went down, you know, unfortunately they suffered an injury, but it forced me, you know, in a bigger role and it, it gave me more opportunities and I just capitalized on them. Did that stretch of games give you more confidence or was the confidence always there since you entered the league out of central Florida in 2015. And it was more so, Hey, I had the opportunity in front of me and I'm going to capitalize. I feel like the confidence was always there. I guess it, it did play a part in a way, you know, as a receiver, you just love getting that rhythm. You know, once you're able to get in that rhythm and get in that groove, you, you just feel like you are unstoppable. And, you know, that's, that's usually how I feel, but it, it really feels good. You know, when you can do it consistently, I just bring a whole nother, whole nother swag out of you. You've had a lot of stops throughout your career. Can you take me through maybe how you've developed the most since the guy was drafted number 26 overall in 2015 by the Baltimore Ravens? I feel like every team had his, had his hand in, you know, my development. Going back to the Ravens, they blessed me with the opportunity. You know, I was the first round pick and that was a, a total blessing. Suffered the injury my first year that had me, you know, on the sidelines the whole year. Come back the second year, put up, a, you know, an average year. But, you know, I spent it more for myself. And my third year, struggled, you know. So it was, it was, a, it was a lot of just mental battles that, that developed me mentally, you know, to be mentally stronger and just to keep fighting through all the adversity. Cleveland definitely played a part of my development as well. You know, after being released and them just giving me an opportunity and go out there and, and really just put it all on the line, put all confidence in, and block all the noise out and myself, you know, really just go out there and play my game and have fun and do what I do what I know what I can do. You know, going to Tampa, basically knowing I was going to be in the, in the starting lineup, 
playing with those guys like Mike and Chris, they definitely taught me things that I never would have, you know, even imagined that I would have learned just from those guys and their work ethic and how they come to the game and come to practice and show up every day. Just going out there and, and sticking to my guns, you know, even when it was kind of slow in the beginning of the season and then, you know, and then pick up to, you know, really towards the end of the season. That's just another thing, like, you know, just staying mentally mentally strong through it all and, and keep pushing and keep grinding and on something good is going to come out of it every each and every time. What do you think about the guy who's going to be throwing the football? Of course, that's Sam Darnold, 22 years old. And when he's had time to throw the football, Rashad, he's been very accurate, especially on those vertical strikes down the field. Oh, yeah, man. He definitely lights out, man. I'm, 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 I'm really excited. You know, it's crazy. I, I'm always watching videos at night and seeing, you know, all the, the great throws that he made. And I'm just, I'm just extremely excited. And, you know, I know he's a he's a great player. You know, you know that before even coming to this team, just his ability that he makes to put the ball in places where you can only make the play and and his ability to even get out the pocket is like crazy. So I can't wait, man. How much did it mean to you that Joe Douglas, a guy who scouted you back in Baltimore, is the GM of the New York Jets? And also Chad Alexander, who was there for a long stint in Baltimore, is now the Jets director of player personnel. It means a lot. It almost feel like a kind of like a homecoming. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get back to work with those guys, you know, and I'm, I'm glad to be in this organization with them, you know, being the head man. It's just, it's just really exciting for me. Do you think the best is ahead of you in your career? Still young. You've had a number of stops. But if you look at what you did at the end of last season and your skill set, there's a lot of thought there that people think, hey, listen, he hasn't even begun to reach his ceiling yet. Oh, most definitely. I know I know there's some great things, you know, coming, especially for this season and, you know, for many years after this. And I'm just excited, man, to get to work. And I know, like, this really just the beginning. You know, last year was just really a glimpse or a sneak peek. And, you know, I feel like this year is going to be definitely a season to remember, not me individually, but I feel like as a team, you know, I just, I just can't wait. Brashad, finally, I want to let you deliver a message to the fans. What would you say to Jets Nation about who they're getting in Brashad Perryman? I would say they're definitely getting a, a true teammate, man, a, and a player that any and everything to, to stack these wins up, and definitely a, a big play, a big playmaker, and who's really just gonna put it all on the line, you know, for for my teammates and the organization in general. I lied. I do have one final question. The fastest you were ever timed in a 40 was what? Man, I, I got so many times that day. <laughs> fastest that I done heard it was the high ones. High ones is like crazy. I heard 4 to 2 a lot. And, you know, it's, it's just a blessing, you know, to be able to go out there and, <laughs> and show, that, show that side of me. Well, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you up here. And stay safe. Uh, that message goes not only out to you, but uh, your family and your friends. Yes, sir. Thank you. Same to you. EA Brashad Perriman joins the Jets just a couple hours after Robbie Anderson departs for the Carolina Panthers. And what do you think that Perriman brings to this offense that maybe the Jets didn't have before he got here? I don't want to compare him to Robbie Anderson because they're different players. The one common trait that they have that they share that is an exceptional trait is they're, they're both burners. The thing about Perryman, though, he's a little bit bigger than Robbie. He's Robbie's maybe, I don't know what he's listed at, but he could be 170, 175 pounds, where Perryman's 6'2", over 200 pounds. So he's a bigger guy who can fly. And uh, the one thing... There's a couple things that you like about him. Sure, the size speed combination is rare, Greens. The other thing is, as our Randy Lang uh, pointed out on NewYorkJets.com, in 2018 and 19, he had 52 catches and 42 of them went for first downs. That's 81% of the time Rashad Perryman was catching the ball. He was moving the sticks. So that's big time. In Tampa, you could put Perryman on maybe the other team's third cornerback because you had Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, who are a fabulous pair, and those guys are just a dynamic uh, duo. But 
again, those guys were suffering from injuries late last year. So he didn't have the benefit of that. And he was still able to put up big numbers. I think Sam Darnold's going to like having Perryman on the outside. Perryman was a good add and definitely a good counter considering how quick they made, made that move after Anderson agreed to terms with the Carolina Panthers. I think Perriman's a good piece of this puzzle moving forward. And Joe Douglas, of course, will have an opportunity if he wants to, to add more players to the team at the receiving position through the NFL draft in a couple of weeks. And that was another edition of the official Jets podcast powered by Amazon Web Services. EA, stay safe and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, buddy.